Hey, grab your Bibles with me and go to Psalm 107. Psalm 107. And we're doing that to save time. That's where we were last week. And so, boy, I thought that was a better joke than that. <laughs> uh, good lands. Psalm chapter 107. It's wonderful to have, um, again, our friends from the police department, sheriff's department, fire department with us here today. And folks, I'd really encourage you, please appreciate them. Um, in, our, in our culture today, we are seeing a rebellion against, against authority and against order. And we need to be a people who appreciate that and are thankful for that. If you start to study the Bible, you can come away with no other conclusion than that. And the Bible also tells us that we need to honor those who, who labor among us. And I'm thankful these folks put their lives on the line. And, um, boy, you get into this. And I, the last time we had one of these days, or I, I can't remember if it was the last time or the second last time, is when Commerce Court burned down. So the last time, so it's taken me this long to get the fire department to come back out. So, so behave yourself, all right? Behave yourselves. Seven years, and so no, no fires. I mean it. Don't even light a campfire tonight. And so, but no, I appreciate. But these these folks, uh, our police force, fire department, sheriff's department, they they deal with things that we don't want to deal with, and I appreciate that. I'm very thankful for that. And folks, we need to go out of our way to say thank you, and I beg you to do so, and appreciate them, and appreciate again uh, our congregations. Uh, thankfulness for them today. Psalm chapter 107. If you're able to, I'd like you to stand with me one last time, and we'll do that in reverence to the Word of God. We've got food that is going to be ready about five minutes after 12, and so I'm going to do my best to fit this message into that time slot. If I don't, you can start to throw things at me. Please start with soft things first. Um, but we'll, we'll start there. Psalm chapter 107, verse 1. It says, God will give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And gather them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in, hungry and thirsty. Their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the night, by the right way, that they may go to a city of habitation. Verse 8 says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let's pray. Father, I come to you today. God, I thank you so much, Lord, for Sunday. I thank you for a time when, God, your people gathered together. God, it's a wonderful privilege to have, uh, Lord, our, our, our local departments with us today. And uh, it's, it's uh, Lord, it's an honor, and I pray that we'd appreciate them and be thankful for them. I pray that they know that, and Lord, they know that they're prayed for and know that uh, we're thankful for them. Now, Father, you help us today as we turn our attention to your word for what is really too short a time. But, Father, take your word. Use it in a way that only you can. I ask this in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. I want to I wanna preach a message this morning on the simple fact that God is good. The Bible says in verse 1, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. By the way, if you have a bulletin today, I gave you a verse list in there, and I hope that will be a help to you. But it says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is what? Good. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is what? Good. All right, verse 8 said, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his what? His goodness. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his what? Goodness. All right, we have a good God. We have a good God, and, I, and we need to know that. Uh, folks, I've been thinking about this all week, that, that we have a good God. There, there's many things, and it's been busy. There's been much activity. There's a lot going on, and I think many of you could say the very same thing. But as I've been thinking about this, I've been thinking, uh, reflecting on the thought that, uh, that I have a, a, a good God. I, and so as, as I jump into this this morning, I want to give you just some simple thoughts. And this is a message I've reworked the, the outline a little bit. But, but I, I, well, before we get to the part about God is good, I need to start with the fact that God is. Before I can say that God is good, I have to say that God is. In Hebrews in chapter number 11, in verse number 6, the Bible says, Without faith, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I would beg you to understand this morning that God is. When, it, when Moses uh, saw the, the burning bush out in the wilderness, and he came to it, and, and out of that that fire out of that burning bush uh, an angel the angel of the lord spoke to him and that angel of the lord revealed himself to moses as he said who are you and, and and that angel said i am that i am god is 
I, I don't I don't know how to really define that answer because 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 what is God? God God is God is peace and God is love and God is joy. I, God is long suffering. God is patience. God is good. There there's so many aspects to our Lord and I'm so thankful for that today. But I need to start before I can talk about the goodness of God. I have to simply state the fact that God is today. God exists. God is real. He's 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 not a, a figment of our imagination. You see, God is today. God is the reason that I have life. He is the life giver. He is the author and he is the taker of life. God is today. Without that simple truth, Christianity is a hoax. True religion is a lie and the Bible is a fairy tale and salvation in heaven is a myth. But thank God these things are real today because God is. God is. Uh, sometimes people say, "Well, a uh, uh, pastor, I just don't know how to believe in God. I can't. I can't see Him. I. I can't feel Him. I. I can't touch Him." And friend, I tell you this today. There's something that we all call gravity, and gravity keeps us down here. And I'm going to be honest with you. I can't see it, and I can't touch it, and I can't feel it. You say, "Oh, oh, uh, uh, clearly it's there." You, you, the only reason you're on this earth is because of gravity. I understand, but I can't feel it. All right. I will say maybe as I'm growing older, I feel a little bit more. I will say that that's a possibility, all right? I've expanded around my horizon, and, and maybe I do feel it to some extent. But but I can't. That hurts me. My own daughter is laughing at me right now. Now, understand something here, all right? I, I can't see that, and I can't feel that, and I can't touch that. But it's there, and it's real, and it's evident. Um, you know, I, one of the things I did today to, to, to prove that God is real is I took my, my keychain. And, and Emily, since you're laughing at your dad, come here. And I took all the keys off it, and I took the key ring off it, and I took the little ring, and I put it in there. And I, I want to prove to you that, see, see some people say that, that God isn't real, but the Bible says that the heavens declare His handiwork. I have a God that is real. All I need to do is look up. Last night when I got home, I got home about 9.30, and I looked up, and, and the stars were shining, and that little crescent moon was, and it it's beautiful, and it's incredible, and it's marvelous to look at. And folks, some people say that over the course of billions and billions of years that this stuff has evolved and come into what it is today. And yet I say to you that there is a designer and there is a creator and the creation itself simply says these two words, God is. God is. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. You say, that, that that's too hard for me to believe. I'm going to have my daughter in the, inside the Ziploc bag are all of the components to a, to a successful key ring. Uh, there's the ring in there. There's the little, the little, uh, you know, the little doohickey that makes your keys your keys. And we got the keys in there. And I'm going to have her shake this. And I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have her shake it the entire service. No, no, Emily, you shake that. You shake that thing. Shake it hard. Shake it hard. Shake it for real, all right? Come on, that's pathetic. All right, I don't care how long she shakes that thing. That thing is never going to attach itself. You say, Pastor, that, that's a trick. Of course that would never happen. Friend, do you understand that the human body is 10,000 times, 10,000 times more complex than that little keychain and that little ring and those little keys? Do you understand that no matter how long? I mean, it took a miracle for me to be here. I, I was going to report a crime to you guys earlier, and that's my wife said I'm, I'm criminally good looking, but I, I won't. All right, I... I, I I'm a miracle today. Do you, do you understand that God, I, I stand before you a living miracle. I am wonderfully and fearfully created. I am a good God. And I want you to understand this. Before I can get there, though, I have to reflect on the simple fact. God is. God is. And please don't ever lose sight of that. Sometimes we, we get down and we get hurt. Emily, keep shaking that thing. What's wrong with you? All right, I'm teasing. You give that to me. Go sit up. All right. Now, folks, tough times come. Tragedy comes along our door path. But God is. God is. And I want to say this secondly to you today. God is good. God is good. In our text in Psalm 107, in verse 1, it says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Say it with me. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is what? Good. God is good. God is good. God is good. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his Goodness. That's what the Bible says. And time and time again, you'll see this in Psalm chapter 100 and verse number 5. And I love Psalm 100. It tells us how to come into the presence of the Lord. We are coming to the presence of God with thanksgiving in our heart. We are to praise Him with our mouth. But verse number 5 of Psalm 100 says, For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. I have a good God today. Now, I, I want to I take it a step further, though, and this is where I think sometimes we disconnect. We say, well, yes, Pastor, God is good, but, but he's good to that man. He's good to that woman. He's good to that family, but he's not good to me. 
that's not true. In Psalm in chapter 145, in verse number 8, the Bible says this. It says, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. Great verse, but it follows this up. And it says, the Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. Now, I said God is good, but I want to say this. God is good to all. That means me. God is good to me today. See, some of you today doubt that. You wonder if God is truly good. You say, Pastor, there's things in my life that have happened, and they're not. And I understand that. And by the way, every single one of us has that. There are moments in our life when we look up and, and we say, Boy, God, I don't know if you're there. God, I don't feel you. God, I don't see it. God, I, I, I wish you were closer. God, I don't understand why this is going on. But I need to remind myself that God is, and God is good, and God is good to me. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and they're so th- simple, but this morning physically, can you see? You know, I, my eyes, I got glasses on. My eyes don't work as well as I'd like them to, but I can see. What a miracle, man. God is good to me. Can I, can I walk? <laughs> can I get up on my two feet and walk? Man, God is good. I remember years ago, a little lady used to come out to church. Sandy Kazalka was her name. And she, she had diabetes and both of her legs had been amputated. And it was always so convicting to me to see her because I see Sandy and she was in a wheelchair. And let's be honest, she couldn't get out of it. She had no legs. But she was always happy. She had a smile on her face. She was just so glad to be here. And that always convicted me because sometimes I'd come in and I'd be grumbling and complaining because life isn't fair. You know, life isn't good to me today. And I don't like that. And boy, i got to be honest, boy, I'd look at her and she'd be smiling, she'd be talking, and she'd be happy to be here. And the Lord would convict my heart and say, son, what are you whining about? What are you complaining about? God is good. I'm good to you, son. I'm there for you. I watch over you. And today, the simple fact that I have two legs that both work, God is good to me. And I beg you today as you sit out there, as you look in the mirror at yourself and realize, hey, God's been good. Hey, my eyes work work. My legs work. Hey, I can breathe today. I've been in a lot of hospital rooms through the years and of course through the last year and a half dealing with COVID and all these things. And, and boy, you, you see people who struggle with their breathing and, 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 and I'd ask you to pray for Brother Sean Schilling. He's home right now dealing with pneumonia in one of his lungs and he's in, he's in rough shape. He was coughing up some blood yesterday. But, but to listen to him strain for his breath yesterday as, as he was raspy and that was hard for him. And today I, I, don't, I don't have to, to think about breathing. It's not hard for me. It's easy. And I'm going to tell you this this morning. I have to remember that God is good, and He's good to me. God is good to me. Let me ask you some more questions. Let's talk about your economic status. Today, do you have food? I know you all do because we're providing it. Yeah, amen. You have food today. But we can go far beyond that, can we not? Folks, I, I have cupboards at home that have food in them. Last night I got home late, had just eaten a real tiny dinner, hadn't had much time, and came back to church, was getting some things ready for today, and came home about 9, 30, 10 o'clock, and I went over to the cupboard, and I just opened the cupboard, and I started picking through the box of crackers and the box of potato chips, and I, I found what I wanted. God is good to me. You know how I got here this morning? I drove. I drove an automobile that started the first time I cranked it. God is good to me. Do you have a place to put your head tonight? God is good to me. As I was thinking about this, (laughs) if you can say no to some of those things, praise God we live in America where we have the freedom to change it. God is good to me. Let me ask you some questions spiritually. See, folks, God is good to me physically. He's good to all. God is good to me economically or socially. God's been gracious to me. But spiritually, and as I got to thinking about this, the Lord just rejoiced my heart. But folks, you know, the Bible teaches that all men have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know, the Bible teaches that because of my sin, I deserve condemnation. A holy God, he's a just God. The law brought me in. That's what the Bible teaches. The law brought me in. And it it was right to bring me in. I was guilty. Hey, I, I did some things that I ought not to. I lied. Hey, I, I cheated. There's some things I did I should not have done. I was a sinner. And in God's eyes, I was condemned. And there was no way out of that. But Jesus Christ interceded on my behalf. And God the Father, God my judge, 
looked at me and said, will you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior? Will you accept him as your advocate? 30-some years ago, I bowed my head and I trusted Jesus Christ alone as my Savior. And when that happened, I went from condemnation to eternal life in heaven. You say, Pastor, is it because you're a good person? No. Is it because you're a good dad? No. Is it because you're a good husband? No. Is it because you care about our community? No. It's because of Christ and Christ alone. He took me and he gave me a home in heaven. And spiritually today, I can look out and say this, heaven is my home. I don't doubt that. If something were to happen to me today, and I hope it doesn't, but if something were to happen to me today, I know that I would go immediately to be with my God. To be absent from the body would be to be present with the Lord. And I know that. And that's a blessing to me as I look out today, folks. I, I, sometimes we get so caught up in, in, in the difficulties and the problems. We, get, we watch too much of the, 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 the news that's going on and we get worked up and we, we get mad at what's going on and, and we get discouraged and we get down. And I need you to stop for a moment this morning and just reflect on the simple fact God is. And then God is good, but it goes through that. God is good to me, and I'm so thankful for that. I am so thankful that today God is good, and he's good to me. You say, no, no, he's not good. Yes, he is. He is good to you physically. He has been good to you economically. He has been good to us spiritually. Man, praise God. I can look out today and say I have a home in heaven. I mean, is there a God in heaven today who loves me? We heard the trio sing a beautiful song. And friend, God loves you. Do you understand? Jesus Christ was given by Almighty God. He came down and he gave you his life. How do you measure the love of God? John 3.16, the most famous verse in all the world, says, For God so loved the world. That little two-letter word is undefinable. So, God loved, God loved you enough to give his son for you. You say, I'm not worthy. By the way, that's the right response because none of us are. But he was willing to give his son's life for you. You have a God in heaven that loves you today. That's a wonderful thought. Spiritually, folks, you say, yeah, I, I, nobody likes me. Everybody hates me. I'm going to go eat worms. I'm going to tell you something right now. You have a God in heaven that loves you. And that shatters that complex that we try to bring upon ourselves. You have a God of gods, a Lord of lords, and a King of kings who brought himself down, who humbled himself, took upon him the form of a man, and he became sin for us so we could be made the righteousness of God in him. Friend, is there a God in heaven today who loves you? I ask you today, is there a church family here who loves you? God is good to me. God is good to me. See, I, I, again, I, I got to get off this. Well, you know, God is good to that man. because Look at his job. Look at, look at how much he has. Look at all the possessions. He, no, no, no. God's been good to me. And lastly, I just throw this thought at you. In a Baptist church, it doesn't mean we're done, just so you know. I tried every Sunday. They never believed me. But, folks, God is good, and God is good all the time. But, folks, God is what? God is what? God is good to who? Okay, so God is good to who? Okay, I got to get that in my head. All right, I, I got to get this garbage out. So, so God is what? God is what? To who? Me. All right. But then God is good, and I'm so thankful for this. He's good all the time. In Psalm chapter 107, and verse 8, it says, I'll give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Forever. Folks, God is always good. God will always be good. But God is good to me, and he's good to me all the time. You see, in the mountain peaks, God is good. Oh, yes. <laughs> when life is on, on cloud nine and everything's going smoothly, oh, it's easy to say, oh, God is good. God is good. Oh, you know, my, my life is together. My marriage is good. My kids are healthy and happy. Everything is good. My job is, is successful. God is good. Oh, that's not a problem. I agree. Pastor, there's no, but hey, listen to me. God is good in the valleys. God is good all the time in the valleys. In the tough times of life, God is good. In death, God is good. In hopelessness, God is good. In bitterness, God is good. In the life of the prodigal, God is good. Through the tears, God is good. Through the years, God is good. 
when life has handed you a lemon, God is good. When the doctor walks in with bad news, God is good. When the divorce is final, God is good. When you leave the, 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 the funeral of a loved one, God is good. When you see your child grow up and leave the nest, God is good. When you can't get up because of the pain, God is good. When hope is deserted and all is gone and everyone seemingly has left you to face it alone, God is good. And Christian, today I beg you to stop for a moment and say with me that God is good. God is what? God is good. God is what? Folks, we got to get that down because we sit here sometimes and we say, oh, oh you, know, you know, other people have it better than I, but God is still good. As I walked in this morning and Melody caught my, caught my arm for just a moment. And folks, a, a year ago, she was in a hospital. A year ago, we didn't know if she was going to make it. And she came home and she's been very restricted because of that awful stroke that she's dealt with. And yet she has a smile on her face and she's happy to see us today because God is what? God is good to who? And he's good to me. All the time. And Christian, I'm going to tell you this right now. You've got to get that into your head. The Apostle Paul in a Philippian jail said, Rejoice the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. You know what I'd write from a jail cell? I hope I never find out. <laughs> Even for fun, guys. Hey, listen to me. I think I'd be writing about how bad it was. How life wasn't fair about how nobody liked me and everybody hated me. But the Apostle Paul said, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. How do you do that? Well, God was good. God was good to Paul. And God was good to Paul all the time. In a jail cell, God was good. In life's trials, God is good. Friend, I beg you to understand this this morning. Because so many of us get caught up and we get beaten down and we struggle. God is today. God is. Well, if you doubt God, you're, 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 you're messing with, you're playing with fire. God is. Man, tonight, just go out and watch. Just, just look at the sky. Look at the sun or the, today and the moon and the stars tonight. And reflect on how a God in heaven did that. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. You're a miracle. Do you understand the fact that you're a living, breathing, seeing, walking mess? It's a miracle? I mean, that's a miracle. God is. But he's so much more than that. Friend, God is good. God is good to who? Me. God is good to me. And God is good to me when? All the time. All the time, God is good to me. God is good to me. All the time. Christian, I beg you today, as you sit there, Realize that. Understand that. My friend, if you're here today and you're not a born-again child of God, by the way, I'm so thankful. One of the things I'm most thankful for in all this world is I am not the one that holds a person's salvation in my hands. It is, folks, as a pastor, I tell people this all over the place all the time. You don't have to go to a Baptist church to be born again. Your pastor, your priest, your pope will never take you to heaven. The only one that will take you to heaven is Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And friend, if you're here today without Christ, without eternal life, you say, well, Pastor, how can you know that? That's, how can you know? I know because my Bible tells me so. It's a wonderful truth. And friend, if you're here today and without Christ, you have a good God. You have a God in heaven who loves you. He gave his only begotten son for you. And he'll give you salvation. You say, what do I have to do to earn it? Absolutely nothing. You can't earn it. <laughs> You've earned condemnation. But Jesus Christ came to give you eternal life. And friend, it's a wonderful truth. God is good. God is good to me. God is good to me all the time. Let's go and stand to our feet.